Hi, I'm Lisa Canning. And I'm Josh Canning. We've been married for almost 10 years, and we are blessed with six children together. And today we thought we'd take the opportunity to, on camera, talk about how um, depression and anxiety has been a very present part of our marriage. We'd like to just take a moment to share with you some of the things we've learned through throughout our marriage and our walk with uh, depression and some things that you might be able to do to support a spouse with mental illness. So our first encounter with depression within our marriage, Josh had um, experienced depression in his teens, but then it really just resurfaced again in 2012 in our marriage. Uh, we had three small children and it was a really, really challenging experience. It, it came uh, and comes each uh, winter in a way and I have a seasonal affective disorder so that's when it, uh, anxiety particularly creeps up and uh, it still somehow catches me by surprise but yeah the first one was right before our, our third child was born and it's kind of revisited uh, every year since. So we want to share some practical tips that we hope offer some hope so here we go. The first tip in supporting a spouse with mental illness is to learn to see the signs. What would you say are some typical signs of um, depression or anxiety? Uh, edginess, uh, tiredness, um, change in personality, um, lack of sense of humor, um, yeah, frustration, general, generalized frustration, complaining. Mm. Uh, these are the things that Lisa will sometimes gently point out to me uh, to help me become aware that I might be uh, in, in a bit of an anxious period. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, there's no way I could do that. You know, my spouse is going to think I'm nagging. It's already stressful enough. What would you say to that, Josh? Uh, well, it just uh, speaking in my case, it's actually freeing. Um, when I am uh, anxious and uh uh, I'm getting really frustrated and worked up about things. It's almost freeing to, to, to be told, hey, you know, you don't really seem like yourself right now. Uh, do you think maybe anxiety is playing a, a role in that? Uh, that's actually really helpful for me, and it allows me to be a bit more um, gentle, give myself a bit more grace. Mm -hmm. So the first tip in supporting a spouse with mental illness is to learn to see the signs. The second tip for supporting a spouse with mental illness is to have a plan to deal. Now, this may sound like super simple to say, and to be honest, it is simple to say um, and a little bit harder to do. But for example, one thing that we've developed in our marriage is very strategic use of babysitters. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can see that um, it's, you know, winter and Josh is definitely going through um, a period of anxiety, then I make sure I call all those people and I book a date night stat mm -hmm. and I book, you know, maybe even a weekend away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, buffer, buffer zones really help uh, the anxious or depressed person um, because, you know, the, the, the small things of life that they're normally able to deal with become overwhelming. So if you can separate them from that, even for a period, it can really, uh, it can really help, help a mindset shift come along. And I want to share an amazing quote from Dr. Terry Ledford. And he says that depression is like an ugly, mean troll that gets inside the victim's body and makes them want to do the very things that feed it and make it grow. When a depressed person decreases physical, social, and pleasurable activity, his depression worsens. So his advice is to starve that troll. So this is where you can have a plan. Encourage your partner to get out. If you have a babysitter, you can go on a date. You can go for a walk. You can do the things that um, would normally make him happy. So definitely have a plan. The third strategy in helping support a spouse with mental illness is to try to help them see past their own inaccurate view of themselves. And I know this is one that hits home for you quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's funny when, when you're uh, in depression, you feel like uh, you've been saddled with somebody else's personality. And just the way that things normally look, they don't look like that. And it's hard to remember when things ever looked normal. So it's, it's, it's hard to really describe if you haven't gone through it. But one of the aspects of uh, being in depression is you see all of the negative aspects of yourself and you see them amplified in sometimes an uh, inaccurate way. Um, so it really helps to have somebody who's close to you who can challenge the things that you're thinking about yourself, things that you're thinking along the lines of, I, 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 I'm not able to cope, I'm no, not good enough, I'm not bringing value uh, to the world. Um, yeah, all these different challenging things uh, that that a uh, depressed person is thinking about themselves, it helps to have that challenged by someone who loves them. Mm -hmm. This for me is the hardest um, part of being a spouse of someone who suffers from mental illness because... Um, I just want to, I just want Josh to see the way that I see him, the way that, um, 
a lot of um, our friends and our family see him and it's um, probably the most difficult part um, when you're the spouse on the sidelines because you just you, you literally just want to hold a mirror to their face and say oh my gosh you're amazing and no one else sees you this way so I definitely want to provide um, a ton of empathy and support um, but this piece for me is the hardest piece and so um, one thing I found really comforting was again to quote my friend Dr. Terry Ledford um, to fight depression the victim must understand that his perceptions are not real he must not trust his thinking or his feelings. He must remind himself daily that those perceptions are inaccurate. So I would just encourage you to, um, as a spouse, to just continue being super positive, even when it's hard for you, even when you're feeling like so, um, you know, disappointed or you're feeling um, alone or you're feeling scared or you're feeling vulnerable just to continue to be um, a positive support um, and reach out to those who might understand what you're going through, which can be really hard. If we can just talk to that for a minute, that mm -hmm. can be really hard. People don't often understand unless they've been through it themselves. So definitely, if you are able to find a network of other couples who are um, also going through the same thing, um, to seek support because it's that's one part that's challenging is that unless you've really been through it, it, it can be hard for people to really understand. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just to, just to speak uh, to that, just a little bit more. Just my wife, um, you know, she's really great at at, at um, being positive. Even though I, I really I really feel for her for how challenging that must be to to bear the weight of of um, to have to be strong for two people, I think is a, is a heavy weight. And I really feel for my wife for when she has to do that. And, and so I do echo what she says. It's important to have a support network for the spouse of a, of a depressed or anxious or, uh, you know, a spouse with mental illness. Um, but uh, going back to what you said about uh, speaking kind of uh, positive things, that, that can really help uh, as well. It can be like little rays of sunshine. So, I, you know, you've probably heard me trying to do it sometimes when I don't feel that great. I'll say things that I don't actually feel, but I'm trying to convince myself, like today is a great day, you know, or today's going to be great, or today's full of possibilities, or, um, you know, yeah, things are things are things are going good, you know, and it's it's not disingenuous. It's just me trying to um, trying to like give aspirational um, support to myself. I don't know if that makes sense, but <laughs> it it's like sense. this is what I wanted. This is what I want today to be, even though my feelings are maybe, you know, somewhere else. Very good. And our final tip, the fourth way to support a spouse who is suffering from mental illness is to try to be proactive and preventative. So we've developed one hack. It's not the cheapest hack, to be very honest, but it's one hack that's really helped us, especially in the winter um, when, um, you know, it can be a, a very bluesy time. Yeah, it's it's not really fair, but I go off on a, a few days of sunshine uh, myself. Um, sometimes I'll go down to the Caribbean for a three-day trip trip or uh, down to my parents place in Florida and uh, that uh, can really break up the dark, kind of dark clouds of the winter season so that that is a bit of a help but I do feel guilty even even mentioning it uh, because it doesn't really seem fair but I'll be very honest yes it is a sacrifice and yes it is logistically a bit of a challenge for us but it's something that we plan for so we just know every January we are going to plan how can we line up babysitters how can we line up a nighttime nanny how can we um, make it possible so that Josh can go and get his hat I mean if we had it set up that I could also go I'm sure we would but the stage that our kids are at I have breastfeeding um, infant um, it just wouldn't be possible right now but I'm sure at some point um, mm -hmm. in our marriage um, we'll be able to go on a sunny holiday in January together but definitely strategize or perhaps you are in the position where you can go with an entire family um, or you know whatever like it's just uh, being proactive so for us we've learned that getting sun in the very dreary time of the winter is a proactive way um, some other proactive ways are to have things like healthy snacks in the house for example or make it really simple to go out and exercise again booking a babysitter at a regular time so you can take a walk together um, and feel kind of normal and maybe outside of your everyday activity so mm -hmm. finding creative ways to be proactive um, and preventative and of course another way you can be preventative is of course booking appointments with um, your doctor to ensure that you're being monitored and checked out do you have any other final thoughts on this topic no I mean I guess maybe one thing would be just to echo that and say that uh, it's really important to have good routines and uh, maybe that's one thing we can kind of look to is 
uh, where are negative habits kind of developing, which um, are kind of cyclical. Am I watching a lot of TV and not exercising a lot? Uh, am I sleeping kind of irregularly or going to bed too late? Those kinds of things. That's another way of being a bit proactive is to try to just build that healthy, healthy lifestyle uh, before you feel really, really down. Hmm. So again, we're Lisa and Josh Canning, and these are our practical tips on how to support a spouse with mental illness. We've both written about this on our blogs, and you can check them out in the links below. Thanks for watching.